Good morning, uh, church family. Uh, I, I got a, just a couple of verses here from Philippians chapter 2 that I'll be sharing with you this morning. Uh, and Lord willing, my camera battery has been running pretty low today, so uh, we will uh, I'll record what I can here. Um, Lord willing, we'll see you, uh, some of you, on Sunday morning. And I look forward to that. And again, our service will start at 1030 Sunday morning. And that's all we're doing is just the morning service. Uh, with that in mind, let's look into God's word. It says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in much my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Uh, so Paul gives encouragement here. He says, I'm not with you now, but when I am, you obey. And th even now, more importantly that I'm apart, uh, we need your, I, I want to see you obeying God. And what a great um, kind of funny reminder this is for us, that we're not together, but while we are apart, we need to be continuing to obey God and walk in obedience to him. Uh, and he says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This does not mean to um, to work for your salvation or to earn your salvation, but rather to work to bring it to a full completion. Um, it, it's the word uh, a phrase that Paul in Paul's time would describe uh, uh, miners who would um, deplete a mine. They would mine it for all of its riches and all of its resources and bring that and would finish that work. Um, the same is for um, harvesting, that they would uh, work a field and bring in all of the harvest and not leave any behind. I know uh, we're not at harvest time yet. In fact, I know uh, some of you are probably planting right now. Um, I had thought about planting some uh, things in our, our garden and then it got real cold, so I'm going to hold off on that for a little bit. Uh, but when harvest time comes, you harvest everything and you bring it in. You bring it to completion and you don't rest until the work is done. Paul is telling us and encouraging us to work out your own salvation, to exercise your salvation, to, to mine its riches. And he says to do that with fear and trembling, which is an a, a interesting phrase to use because... Uh, I think of our salvation as a joyful thing and a, a thing to rejoice in and to praise God for, not to be afraid of. Uh, and yet he tells us to do that with fear and trembling. I think it to show that respect and reverence towards God, that we do not grow stale in our Christian walk, but to to be active and involved in it, to continue to work it with fear of the Lord and with trembling, with respect, with with uh, that respect that we show him. Why do we do this? Because it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It is the work God does within us to work, to, to want to do and to actually do his good pleasure. So what can we mine out of our salvation? What can we harvest from our salvation? Uh, as we look back there to do this, um, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, that God wants us to be conformed to his son. He wants us to be conformed, as Romans 8 tells us, to the image of his son. That our life, our Christian life, is a process of growing in Christ-likeness. And so we do that with fear and trembling because it is God who is working within us to want to do this and to be able to do this. Our lives have such potential in Christ. Are we getting all that we can out of it? This world offers us sinful pleasures. This world offers us things that God did not intend for us to pursue. Um, how much better can we get out of our, that we can get out of our life if we pursue godliness rather than worldliness? And that will mean telling the world no. That will mean turning away from the world but pursuing righteousness, pursuing Jesus Christ. Uh, and why fear and trembling? That we take it seriously, as I said, that we do this out of respect and reverence towards God, fearing that we disappoint him. Um, so God, it is God who is working in you, both to will and to do his will, that, and to do that which pleases God, and also um, 
we got to consider that in our in our practical life that we don't come to church that we don't serve God just because we're afraid of what other people will think but because of the work that God is doing within us so I might um, raise some eyebrows here when I say this but I tell you this don't come to church if the only reason you're coming is because you're afraid of what other people will think if you don't that might sound shocking to you but to be honest if you're coming just out of a sense of guilt um, or out of a sense of, of sinful guilt um, there's a difference there if you are coming and serving God because you want people to think highly of you um, you, you know I've got to come or people are going to question whether or not I'm really a Christian, that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, you just as soon as stay home to be, to be perfectly, uh, to be perfectly blunt there. Um, our motivation ought to be, I am doing this to please God. I am coming to church. I am serving God because it pleases him. And he has asked me to do this, not because uh, you know, somebody is talking bad about me because I'm not in church now. Uh, we come to church, we serve God because he has put within us a desire to do what he has called us to do. And uh, he has called us to serve him and to, to pursue Christ-likeness. And we do that to please him, not others, and not even ourselves, but to please God, to please Jesus. Um, and now I say all of this because uh, even in light of still having limited services this Sunday, um, you know, I'm not going to think bad about you for staying home. In fact, I encourage many of you to continue to stay home until you are sure that you can be out and be and do so safely. Um, but uh, he tells us to, uh, it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. God is working within you to do his will. So we do this, these things to serve him, uh, to, to uh, exercise uh, that desire to serve him and to do his good will. Um, Warren Wearsby tells us that there are certain tools that God uses in a believer's life. And he tells us this in his commentary on the, on the book of Philippians. He says, uh, too many Christians obey God only because of pressure on the outside and not the power on the inside. And Paul warned the Philippians that not his, pres that not his presence with them, but their desire to obey God and please him was the important thing. They could not build their lives on Paul because he might not be with them very long. Uh, it is sad to see the way some ministries in the church weaken or fall apart because of a change of leadership. And then he'll go on and talk about that. And I think I, I, I touched on that briefly last last week. But uh, Warren Wearsby tells, gives us three tools that God uses um, to help us grow in his will and help us serve him in his will, in God's will. And those tools are... Um, the Word of God, of course, you would expect uh, any pastor to say that. That if you are not in the Word of God because God wants you to be in His Word, then you are not using the tool of God. And, and I would dare say you cannot be used as effectively by God. So be in His Word. Um, we could look at many passages that talk about the importance of being in God's Word um, for, uh, for anyone in ministry. First Timothy um, or Second Timothy three sixteen, um, that uh, all of Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable uh, for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. And I think I'm missing some things there, but um, and he says so that the man of God might be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We need to be in the Word of God. That is one of the tools God uses in our lives. Also, prayer. Um, Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, um, the, the pastors of that time, um, God led them to develop the uh, ministry of deacons so the deacon can help with the, the practical things of the church, to help with the, the uh, fielding the complaints from the widows who were being overlooked, um, and that they were able to take care of those things so that the pastors could devote their time to the study of God's word and to prayer. Um, as, as a pastor at the time, I spend in prayer is so important. Uh, and 
Uh, furthermore, Scripture tells us that it is important for a believer to be in prayer, and that is one of the tools for uh, believers to use, uh, to be in prayer. And if we are not in prayer, then we are not using the tool that God has given us to serve Him effectively. And then um, Wearsby also says suffering is a, a tool that God uses in our life. And we looked at that um, not that long ago in Philippians where he says, It has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Suffering is a tool that God uses in our life. It strengthens us. It strengthens our faith. Suffering gives us wisdom to say, you know what? I know not to do that again. Um, this past week I was doing some yard work and I had a, a little handheld saw that I was using to trim back um, a few things and uh, my leg itched. So I, I used this handheld saw to reach down and scratch my leg. Well, I got more than I bargained for. Uh, it cut some some skin. <laughs> it wasn't real bad, but it was enough to to, to bleed a little bit. And I, I told my wife I had cut myself um, while I was out sawing, and you know she gave me the appropriate um, caring response. But then one of my kids um, spoiled it and said that I got the cut because I was being foolish with this tool, and so then she didn't have much sor sorrow for me anymore after that. So, so thanks a lot, son, for um, um, sharing that um, that that. Uh, the truth there, <laughs> but um, I, I did not use the tool properly. Um, but in that suffering, I gained wisdom. Don't use a hand saw to, to scratch your leg uh, because it's a little sharp. And, and uh, my wife asked me if I learned my lesson, and I said, yeah, uh, I shouldn't scratch myself as hard next time with the saw. So I, I probably didn't <laughs> learn my lesson there. Um, but suffering, we can learn our lessons um, for um, uh, to know, you know what, I've got wisdom now not to do this thing anymore or to do this thing differently or in a different way. Um, and God can use our time of suffering for those purposes, but also to bring him glory because he alone deserves glory. So a couple of verses for us to meditate on, some things for us to meditate on this week. For some of you, I look forward to seeing you face to face this Sunday, um, and uh, we will have some things set up uh, here to hopefully um, uh, keep us as safe as we can. Um, because as the governor said today, um, just because she's opening up Iowa doesn't mean that, that that this virus is gone. It's still here, and we're still going to have to operate through it. Um, so that means some of you are going to need to stay home, and I understand that, and we do. And we'll miss you. Uh, but I'll continue to record and uh, we'll get things up for you so you can watch safely from home. And some of you will be here. And I encourage you if, you, if you're able and, and you want to, to come. But if, if you're still not feeling safe, to stay home. Uh, to know that um, you can still pray and still serve God even from your homes. And, uh, and I encourage you to do that. To, to be in His Word. To pray to not look at suffering as a bad thing, that it is a tool that God uses in our life so that we will will, we will want to do and we will do his good pleasure. So in the meantime, I'm praying for you. I ask that you pray for me and uh, we look forward to the day when we can all be back together. Uh, so God bless you. Uh, take care.